Hello everyone, welcome to David Griffiths Electrodynamics. This is problem 2.21 in the book. Um, so let's just jump right into this. The problem statement says to find the potential inside and outside a uniformly charged solid sphere whose radius is capital R and whose total charge is little q. Use infinity as your reference point and then after finding the potential, compute the gradient of the potentials and check that it yields the correct electric field. And then also sketch a graph of the potentials as a function of, of the radius r. Or not the radius, the distance from the center r. All right, so I've just drawn a, just a simple diagram. We have a, with a solid uh, sphere here of radius big R, charge density rho, um, total charge little q, and I've gone ahead and written the electric fields in the regions that we're going to be considering. Um, you can just figure this out very quickly using Gauss's law. Uh, we've already done these problems before. Um, we found these fields in other problems, so all I've done is just simply copy them down since we're going to be using them. So if you don't remember how to do that, um, I would go back and try to find those problems or just simply use Gauss's law to figure out the fields again inside of the sphere and the electric field outside of the sphere because we have to consider both regions. So how do we find the potential? Um, well, it says to use infinity as a reference point. And real quick, I'll just write down the equation for finding the potential. So V of R is equal to minus integral of E, the electric field, dotted with DL. All right, so if infinity is our reference point, then we're measuring from infinity. So if, um, let's first consider that we're some distance um, R away from the sphere, let's say it's right here, R. Let's see if we can figure out what the electric potential would be at this point in space due to this configuration. Okay, so V of R would then be um, minus the integral, and we're gonna be integrating from infinity to little r, where r in this case is greater than uh, the radius. So the electric field in this region uh, is this. So it's gonna be this dotted with dl. And in this case, dl is, well, we're in spherical coordinates. You can look up um, in Griffith's textbook what dl is in spherical coordinates. But in this case, the only component that will survive is the r hat component um, since we only have a r hat component for a field. So when you dot those two, you just get the r hat component of the electric field. So it'll just, e dot dl will simply just be um, one over four pi epsilon naught q over r squared. And I'll just write it out for clarity's sake. So this is e, and then dot that, that's, the, that's e, dot that with dl, but dl is just dr r hat. And so doing that dot product, you just get um, do I have a space? Nah, let's move on to the to the other page. So V of R is going to be minus integral from infinity to R. Um, I should have pulled out the constants, but that's okay. No worries. Q over R squared. Um, the R, R hat. And Q is a constant, one over four pi epsilon non is a constant. So all we're doing is finding the integral of one over R squared with respect to dr. And that's really simple. That will give us, if we ignore this minus sign, the integral of this is negative one over R. So that negative will cancel out this negative and the constants remain. So we'll have one over four pi epsilon naught Q over R. 
and it's a scalar quantity. The potential is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. And this is the potential for outside of the, um, the sphere. So that was pretty easy. Let's move to finding the potential inside of the sphere. So V of R, so I'll say for inside, just to kind of separate these two. Um, we have another integral. And in this case, we're gonna have two integrals because we have to, to, to get from infinity to inside of the sphere, we have to, we're, we cross the region of that, that is outside the sphere, right? So we have to, it's like you're calculating work. It's, that's basically what potential is. It's just the work per unit charge. And so we're gonna have two integrals. We'll have one integral where we go from infinity to the radius, right? So in this first case, we went from infinity all the way out to some random point R uh, that's outside the sphere. But in this case, we're going to some point uh, R that's inside of the sphere. So ignore this one for now. Now we're inside the sphere. And so we have to go from infinity to the radius and then from the radius to R. So we have two integrals going on. And in each case, we have to consider the electric field and the respective region. So this first part is literally just going to be our answer from uh, the, the other part, except in this case, little r just becomes big R because um, this point is essentially just moved to on the, the radius of the sphere, on the sphere itself. But I'm gonna write it out anyways. I'll just, well, I'll just write e dot dl here. Um, and we, we know that this is going to be our answer from the first part, plus another integral, but since the potential has this minus sign here, it'll really be a minus, minus integral from the radius to little r. And now we have to use the electric field inside of the sphere, which is this here. So we have one over four pi epsilon naught, QR over capital R cubed, and same with the dot product, it's just gonna be um, dr here. So same deal with the dot product here. All right, so we know that this answer, this integral is just our answer here, but with little r replaced with the with capital R, the radius. So we have equal to minus, uh, well actually without the minus, the minus sign was taken into account here, so we don't have the minus sign, it's really a positive. But we have one over four pi epsilon naught, Q over R for the first part, and then minus, I'm gonna pull out the constants this time so we have Q over four pi epsilon naught, uh, capital R cubed, so then our integral from capital R to little r, and we just have an integral of R dr. All right, so this integral is simple enough. This becomes R squared over two. So let's see. Let's factor out, um, well, let's just write everything first. I'll factor it out here in a second. So we still have Q over four pi epsilon naught R minus Q over four pi epsilon naught capital R cubed. And then the integral here is little r squared. Um, really, I should say this is dr prime. The integration variable should it's not the same as this R, so really I should have put a prime there or something to make the difference between uh, the integration variable and the bound here. Um, but that's just gonna be R squared, little R, little R squared over two minus capital R squared over two, right? And so this minus sign is there. And now that minus sign will just flip those two around and we can pull out some constants. So 
the potential here. Let's pull out Q over four pi epsilon naught. Let's just leave that for now. Then we have, what do we have? Um, well, this has one over R. Then we have minus one over R cubed, and then R squared, sorry, let's do capital, let's see. If I had, if I put that minus sign in, that would be a plus, and it would flip those around, so let's just do that. And I'll factor out the two here and put it on the bottom like that. I think that's the most simple way to write this. Yeah, I, I think I like this better. You could have the minus sign here and these flipped around. Uh, you could have the two distributed, but I think this is a clean way to write the potential. All right. So that is, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, now we have to find the gradients of each, um, and that shouldn't take too long. Let me just um, get another sheet of paper, and real quick, I'm gonna look up the gradient in the book in spherical coordinates. So we only have r hat components in this case, so the gradient will literally just be a derivative with respect to r for each potential. So let's do um, outside the sphere first. So outside, and let's just double check that we get the electric fields that we started with. All right, sorry about this. The camera is not focusing too well. There we go. It's okay. All right, so the gradient of V of R is just going to be the derivative with respect to R of Q over four pi epsilon naught R. So yeah, so the, the derivative of this is just going to be, um, this is R to the minus one, so minus one over r squared. And so we have minus q over four pi epsilon naught r squared. And if you remember the relationship between the potential and the electric field is that the electric field is equal to minus gradient of the potential. So we have the gradient. If we apply a minus sign, we get positive. And this is gonna be in the r hat direction. When we do the gradient and yeah so this gives us the correct electric field once you apply that minus sign so we're good there now let's do inside and let's see we have the gradient of v of r which is just the derivative with respect to r of it was q r four pi Epsilon naught R Q. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm doing the. Let me just start over. I'm. That was the electric field. That's what we want to get. Um, but the potential was Q over 4 pi epsilon naught um, plus 1 over 2 R cubed R squared minus R squared. So in the r hat direction, so if we do the derivative, that's a constant, so zero. This part is a constant, so zero. Um, then we have one over two r cubed minus r squared, so bring the two down, cancels with the two, minus r over r cubed. Yep, so that gives us and we still have, oh, I forgot to, I wrote this wrong. Um, I'm sorry. Let me, let's see. 
There should be a 1 over R here. There we go. Did I do that right? Let me just, I'm just double checking something real quick. Oh, I am so sorry. So, here we go. In this first integral, I know we talked about um, how when we were calculating potential for inside, the first integral is from negative infinity to r. However, when I wrote the potential for the first one, I left a little r, didn't use big R. Um, so this should be capital R. I am very sorry about that. I am going to put this in the, try to cut this and put it in the video before I make this mistake. Um, so um, when you see little r here, just remember that I actually mean big R and I correct myself later. I am very sorry about that. This should be big R. This should be big R. Yes, okay, that's what was confusing me. So that's a constant. Everything's good. If you take the derivative of this, what we get is qr over 4 pi epsilon naught, capital R cubed R hat, which is the correct electric field. That's the one we started with. Okay. So we are all good there. And the last part is to plot a graph of the potential. And I'm not going to do that here on paper. The plots... Um, I mean, the potentials just start to get more complicated. So I, if you guys want to plot the fields, I recommend a website such as desmos.com um, or even using software such as Mathematica, and you should be pretty easy. Uh, you should be able to plot the um, potentials fairly easily that way. Maybe at one some point I'll start trying to incorporate, once we get to more um, complicated fields and, and potentials and whatnot, maybe I'll like include... Mathematica plots and the videos that I've made um, We shall see if that's something you guys want let me know and I can um, Try to start incorporating plots using software like Mathematica And that's all I have for today. So thank you guys for watching um, I'm sorry about the little capital R mishap But I hope this video made sense to you and helped you out If you guys have any other questions uh, Feel free to comment below if you have any corrections. Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.